definitely should ace the MCAT. Uh, just looking at some of the statistics here in the U.S., um, you know, some of the top programs out of the thousands that are applying, only 5% are, are getting in. So when you kind of break that down, what does that mean? I mean, this, this essentially means it's highly competitive, which is why it's very critical that you prepare for, you know, each component of your application. And precisely what we're talking about right now is the MCAT. And then when we turn it over and look at some of the statistics in Canada, it's essentially the same thing, right? It's, yeah, exactly. it's about 10% that get in among the thousands that are applying each year. And again, just emphasizing how critical it is that this MCAT component is something that, you know, you're paying attention to and you're allocating the appropriate time to prepare for it. In case you've never uh, seen any of our past events, my name is Veruz Momeni. I'm the CEO and founder here at BMO. And I have uh, several of our uh, admission experts here today that I'd like to introduce. Uh, firstly, I'd like to introduce Ronza, who is our Associate Director of Consulting and one of our uh, lead ad uh, admission experts. Uh, next is Deepa, who is uh, one of our uh, admission experts, and one of our lead admission experts, uh, actually, as well. First of all, what's the, what's the MCAT? I'm going to quickly go over this. So you know this. This is a, uh, if you're not familiar, it's a computer-based exam, multiple choice. And a lot of schools require it. Not every school, most schools require it. Uh, and it's meant to uh, examine certain skills that a future fantastic medical doctor must have. Now, there's four sections on MCAT, uh, chem and physics. Uh, you have bio. You have uh, the psych section and uh, social biological foundation of behavior. And of course, the the, our favorite is the CARS section or the critical analysis and reasoning. And it's our favorite because, uh, you know, you could do really well on every other section, but totally uh, uh, screw up your uh, whole MCAT score because of this section. And it's uh, our favorite because it's actually a lot simpler to do well on the CARS than people make it to be, especially if you're a pre-med and you've gone through the traditional pre-med course, courses and you've never done social sciences, you've never done humanities, you will really struggle on this part, but we're actually gonna teach you what you could do to overcome that, even if you've never taken these courses. So what's the rationale? And this is important. Every section you notice today, we're gonna to tell you the rationale. The rationale is the part a lot of people skip and they just want to be like, how can I prepare? What's the strategy? Well, you can't do that until you understand what the test makers are trying to test. That makes it a lot more interesting and a lot easier to prepare for it. So the rationale is, as I mentioned to you, you know, and I'm going to put this up here so you see what the rationale is for different sections. But the goal is, how can we design a test that's going to help us select uh, future medical doctors, because, uh, you know, there's no other way to do that. Like, we can't say, okay, go treat a patient now and let's see how you do. We can't take that risk. This is not a profession where you could do that. So can we design different tests? That's why you got the MCAT, then you got the application, then you got the CASPER, then you got the interview. That's what these are all des uh, designed. Each of them uh, try to look at different qualities that are important to be a future medical doctor. Now, well, I do have to say the jury is still out there whether or not MCAT actually does that. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of uh, studies that show that mm, maybe it doesn't really correlate with how a person can really do well as a, as a doctor, and it could cause some uh, bias in the applicants. But it doesn't matter. Regardless, that's the thing that you have to prepare for, and we're going to tell you how to do that. Now, Let's go to the top three reasons. Uh, and, you know, Ronza and Deepa, I think, are going to tell us about these reasons. And I'm going to put them all up here. And maybe you guys can explain this triangle of doom. The, as, the upside down triangle or cycle of exactly. doom as we see it. Yes. Uh, well, first and foremost, obviously, when we look at this, the top three reasons, I would say inadequate preparation. So essentially, this means you 
don't prepare, right? You don't allocate sufficient time. You don't study for the sections that you need help with. You don't get a chance to fill in the gap in your knowledge for the subtopics that you might not really feel comfortable with. And in turn, the second uh, that's connected to is, you know, lack of strategies. You're not putting all this knowledge to test, right? You know, reading passages uh, strategically, which we'll get into and how to break it down. Uh, learning how to even approach uh, the answers, the options that you have, and, and then learning the ability to actually eliminate the wrong ones, the obviously wrong ones, and being able to wiggle it down to the right ones, and doing this all in a very strict time period. And, you know, lastly, uh, you know, all of this could connect to, obviously would lead to a lack of confidence, usually a result of the first, you know, not preparing, the second, not having strategies, but just on its own, uh, you know, having exam anxiety, which is very common, and, and Deepa could attest to that, having taken the MCAT, um, it could really, you, you can really stress out. There's a lot to manage in a, in a, even just leading up to it, and even on the day of, um, which could definitely hurt your performance. So a lot of these, you know, that we call it the cycle of doom, because it is very much interconnected. Uh, you can't just focus on one, you have to focus on all three. Uh, but some of them, you know, alone are very detrimental if you don't pay attention, uh, pay attention to them. Um, Deepa, would you agree? I know you've, you've gone through this yourself and, and not preparing certainly is not going to lead to a good performance. Yeah, absolutely. I think those three are all equally important because even if you're very prepared and you have all of your strategies, if you don't have the confidence to do well, um, it could definitely lead to a poor performance. Yeah, and, and we'll get into some sort of stress management techniques later on of, uh, you know, box breathing, a healthy diet, exercise, sleeping, and not cr like cramming it all in the night before, which is never good for any exam, let alone the MCAT. Uh, so let's let's put this all all these negative strategies away. We don't want to we don't want to focus on those. Let's talk about how to prepare. So to avoid that cycle, upside down triangle of doom, however way you see it. Um, let's let's talk about some of the facts. So first and foremost, it's like practicing for any skill, right? So we here at BMO always say perfect practice makes perfect. I know a little different than the usual phrase. Uh, that's because we like to instill good habits and ensure that you are successful. You know, noting like any skill you're going to gain, you know, you don't just wake up one day and say, hey, I'm going to excel at it. I'm going to do great. It takes time. It takes perfect practice, instilling good habits. And a lot of that is going to segue to some of the other strategies we're going to talk about. So fact number two. This, is a, this is a good point. I'll, I'll just make a clarification here yeah. as well. It's when you practice something, if you don't know that's the right thing to do, you're just creating a habit. So if it's a bad practice, you're just creating bad habits for yourself. So practice does not make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect, which is exactly what Ronza was explaining. Uh, and, and then that becomes harder, this, right? To break that, like you have to kind of unlearn. It the, and now it actually becomes detrimental. That's why mm -hmm. when you're starting this, this is why this conference is so important for most of you. It's just the right timing for a lot of you, preparing for the MCAT application, et cetera, et cetera. At least, the least you could get from this conference is what should I do? doesn't matter if you come to BMO or not. That's not the point. The point is, what should I do? There's certain things that at least you know, okay, this is the right way I got to do it. And then you go from there. So let's keep going and talk about maybe what is this best practice in yes. case of So one of uh, our biggest strategy is using realistic MCAT style passages, right? You need to be able to challenge yourself and consider all the sections, all the subtopics, you know, everything that's listed out at AMC. Um, you know, we've covered the four sections and, and all that. But essentially, you need to be diversified in that. And you need to be tested on the, the level of complexity that you will be uh, tested on on the day of. Um, and a lot of that is connected to feedback. So fact number three, you know, these sample questions are definitely going to be ineffective without proper feedback. We just stressed perfect practice and not just practice. And how do you get to that perfect? That means you need feedback. You need someone to be able to pinpoint, you know, where you're underperforming, where that gap is, and how to approach it most importantly. Um, similar to learning a new skill, right? You wake up one day, you don't just jump on it and say, I'm going to do great. You know, you get coached, you get, you go through it, you get feedback, you, you get told how to kind of pivot if you're not doing it well. 
Uh, so that's definitely very essential for your preparation for the MCAT. And then, of course, fact number four, you know, books, guides, crash courses are going to be ineffective, just like any skill. You don't just read about it and then say, OK, I guess now I'm an expert. Right. You definitely you know, have to put all those components that we just talked we'll, about. We'll make, we'll make, I'll make a clarification here. It, we should say it, they're ineffective on their own. You know, books, guides, they're good for information. You need the base. But you got to do the practice, like just like Raza said, like you cannot learn how to swim by reading a book about swimming. It's just impossible. You learn your strokes, but then you got to go swimming. There is no other way. Exactly. I mean, it's good for a foundation, right? The knowledge, but you definitely have to actually get get into the swimming pool to learn how. Um, this is, this is going to all make more sense when we actually cover some of the strategies, which I'm really excited that we're going to tackle together. Uh, but regardless, uh, fact number five. You must have a strategy for any possible MCAT style passage. And I know at this point it's probably daunting. Like how could you possibly anticipate the questions? You can't, right? How could you possibly anticipate the types of passages? You cannot, but you can certainly have a strategy to be able to decipher, break down, eliminate, find the right choice, um, and be able to do that in a timely manner. Because again, time is of the essence here.